One of the things that I've been seeing really taken off over the past few years is cinematic FPV. What does that mean? It's when people take a drone that's meant for FPV racing and they wind up shooting really cinematic shots. They're not just flipping everywhere in every single direction like you see with normal FPV videos, but really intentional lines, really close proximity through awesome gaps. Thanks to camera sizes and the quality of GoPros these days, you can get some really amazing footage. Um, and also thanks to the um, stabilizing softwares, you can get some really stable footage even without a gimbal. Hey, I'm Robert McIntosh. I won best in show this year at the LA Drone Film Festival with my film Muscle Up. These are my top five tips for shooting more cinematic FPV videos. Tip number one. Go slow. Like, there's no reason to go super fast. I know these little drones, they just want to rip and race and do tricks and do flips, but it's not really necessary when you're trying to make a film. Um, I guess you want people to forget about the cameraman and forget about the operator, right? So showing off isn't really what it's all about, it's it's kind of just taking the viewer on a ride, on a on a nice ride, right? <laughs> um, so one way to do that is to, is to slow down a little bit. Let's let's you know take in the scenery, feel more like you're you're floating rather than ripping through the scene. Tip number two. So I don't even fly in rate mode. I mean, I can do it. I can do a flip. It just seems like more work to me to have to, um, if I want to slow down or I want to level out, I actually have to push push the stick in the opposite direction in order to level out, where if I'm in auto level mode, all I have to do is like let off, let off pressure from the direction that I'm moving and that helps me level out. And I guess it's easier to go slower that way, for me at least, and it's easier to sort of line up fitting through gaps that way because it's sort of like less effort that I have to do with my thumb at least that's how it makes sense to me. I know everybody has their own preferences and most people think rate mode is the greatest thing. And I, I can't argue with them because they, they're amazingly skilled pilots, most of these people. So that's just, that's just what I do. I, I just find it helps me go a little bit slower. It helps me, it just helps me do the things that I want to do with the camera. Tip number three. Yeah, like I don't think I've ever like seen a location on the internet and said, I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna bring my gear and shoot that location. It'll always be like a location that I've been to before or I'll go there without the gear first and then just really think about it and kind of space out and daydream and try to imagine things and then decide whether I'm gonna shoot there. Like really knowing the location can make it, I don't know, easy for easy to find Easy to just imagine lines to do because you're so familiar with the location. Tip number four. Sort of pimp the settings of the camera out as, as, as hard as you can. Get the most production value out of your cheap little GoPro as you can. And GoPro has a lot of options to do that in ProTune mode. They'll let you lock the exposure. They'll let you pick the white balance. They'll let you pick the shutter speed, they'll let you turn the sharpening down to zero so that you can sharpen later in post. You can set your color to flat color. You can turn ProTune on, which gives you a better bit rate. And you wanna do all those things so that you get the highest quality information so that you can do the most to it in post. Um, you also wanna shoot at a high frame rate, which helps you stabilize more easily and lets you do other cool things in post, like make better motion blur. You can fake the motion blur in post rather than using an ND filter, and that'll let you stabilize even better. I guess with the new Hero 6, I'm doing more uh, 2.7K, 60 frames per second, um, four by three mode. So that gives you the widest field of view possible. Um, it's actually the same field of view as Super View, except it's, it doesn't have that weird sort of smushed anamorphic distortion. Um, it's kind of hard to describe, but Super View is literally 2.7K 4x3, but smushed into 16x9. So that's the mode I've been liking the most on the Hero 6 so far, with the internal stabilization off just so I can stabilize in post. 
because if you have the internal stabilization on, it kind of conflicts with stabilizing in post. Yeah, so you can shoot in 4K 4x3, but um, it's only 30 or 24, I think. So that means you'll have more rolling shutter distortion because uh, the camera has more time to make rolling shutter, like more time in between frames to record the frame. So you'll get more uh, rolling shutter artifacts, jello, stuff like that. That's another advantage of shooting at a higher frame rate is that you're giving the camera less time to make rolling shutter distortion. So uh, the next best thing is 2.7K 4x3 at 60 frames per second. But the 4K 60 frames per second is 60 frames per second is also awesome too. It's just not as wide as the 2.7K 4x3. So I like to go wider because it gives you more real estate to stabilize in. Plus it makes it look like you're going faster. Tip number five. Another thing you can do to make your films more cinematic looking is try to fake everything that happens in cinema in post with your footage, right? So you're shooting with this cheap GoPro, but you, you still get a lot of good information out of the GoPro. You can shoot at a high bit rate, a high frame rate, and you have all this stuff to work with in post and you can basically just do everything you can to it in post to try to mimic what expensive film or like an expensive red or airy camera will look like in post. So when you're shooting at a high frame rate, you can like do post motion blur um, after you've done your stabilization. So it's like the exact 180 shutter angle that a film camera would be. And you can, if you're shooting uh, in ProTune with the flat color profile on the GoPro, you get more leverage to do um, manipulate the color, do better color correction, that sort of thing. And then if you shoot um, with the sharpness set to low or off, I think, you can do your sharpening in post after you've done all your post work, after you've done your stabilization, after you've done your motion blur. So that's gonna make it look nicer too. Um, and what else? You can do like subtle retiming, a little bit of retiming. Um, like I did that on one of those films I did. I think it was, uh, fresh squeeze, like, cause I had this audio track, this music that was like almost lining up with the gaps that, that I hit. So I did like little subtle retiming. So that the, you know, the beats of the music would hit these gaps at the exact same time. Yeah, I, I guess, yeah, just you, you wanna spend too much time in post working on it. You wanna watch it a million times and sleep on it and watch it again and be like, ah, oh, that little part bothers me, I can fix that. And you can fix it because it's post, you know? You can fix it forever until <laughs> until the end of time. I mean, it, I guess it, you have to stop eventually. You have to say, all right, I've had enough of this film. It's time to move on to another film. But that, that's the nice thing about post is you can you can get it as close to perfect as you can possibly make it. And I, I think that's a good thing to do when you're using such a cheap GoPro camera is squeeze every last drop of production value out of it in post. Tip number six. Make them look like they were shot with more expensive gear, like a more expensive rig, like a state-of-the-art gimbal or a, you know, Cineflex or a shot over type of rig. And of course you can't do that with these tiny little five inch or two inch quadcopters. So the next best thing is to stabilize it in post. And Real Steady is a great way to do that. That's kind of half the reason we made Real Steady is to, there was no solution for um, doing really high quality stabilization in post, at least that satisfied my needs. So we're like, let's, let's just do it ourselves. And you know, it's, it's, it's hard to tell whether you've shot something and stabilized it with real steady in post or you've shot it with a really expensive gimbal if you side by side them and they're the same resolution. So um, it, it definitely helps. You should see, you should watch the before videos of these films that I've shot and you'll really see the difference. You'll, it, it's like night and day. It almost looks like, it almost looks like I'm faking it or something, you know, like a lot of people will say that. They'll be like, this is CG, this is fake. So you have to show them the before footage, otherwise they don't believe you that you actually flew this line. So I don't know, I, I actually, I love it when people say it looks fake, you know? That, that's like the best compliment they can pay me because it's like, sweet, fooled you. <laughs> I love those tips. I thought a lot of them were really helpful, especially all the cinematic settings on the GoPro. Please leave some comments, 
throw some love down there or questions or anything else you might have and we'll do our best to answer them. Uh, like, subscribe, share, whatever. Check out Robert McIntosh's work. It's really, really, really good. He's won a lot of awards at the New York City Drone Film Festival and the Los Angeles Drone Film Festival. He's a leader, he's a trailblazer, and also he is the founder of Realsteady, as he mentioned. Uh, Realsteady is superb stabilizing software. Check out Realsteady's Instagram if you wanna see some pretty awesome examples of this and some other amazing pilots that use Realsteady and get your creative juices flowing So for what you can do with the a drone and a piece of software. March 3rd and 4th, make sure to go to this. All right, New York City Drone Film Festival is coming your way. It's gonna be the best drone films on the big screen, panels, seminars, expo, drone racing, all kinds of fun, awesome stuff for FPV heads, drone enthusiasts, aerial cinematography, filmmakers. So come get your tickets now. Be well, shoot well, kick ass, fly safe. And uh, yeah, make some great art. We'll see you soon. Peace. Hasta la vista.